So there's one last category of behaviors that are possible in evolution for altruism. And this is referred to as reciprocal altruism, where unrelated individuals that can recognize each other and reciprocate. Looking at reciprocal altruism, we think about the future. And so altruism is based on the prospects of future favors in return. So here we have a cost of the altruist as we had before. So I help you in some way and I have fewer offspring as a result. And you benefit. So there's benefits and costs. But we're not going to have any kinship in this situation. This might allow for cooperation between unrelated individuals. So if I help you today, but you help me again tomorrow, we'll each have received a benefit at some cost to ourselves. And so B minus C would, would describe the net benefits of reciprocation. And as long as B is greater than C, altruistic partners would do better than non-altruists. You want to form a cooperative relationships if there's a net benefit from these kinds of exchanges. The problem with reciprocal altruism in this kind of exchange is that cheaters can prosper by refusing to pay back the altruists. So reciprocity is only favored when cheaters are excluded from further exchanges. So let me show you what I mean by this. Here we have two individuals and one is nice to the other. So he suffers, a net, he suffers an initial cost of minus C and the other gets an initial benefit of plus B. When the other individual reciprocates now, there's been two exchanges, and so as a result, each individual has had one beneficial uh, experience and paid the costs one time. And so they each have a net B minus C, okay? On the other hand, if we have a nice guy meeting a jerk, then the nice guy goes ahead, confers the benefit, suffers the costs, but then the jerk refuses to reciprocate. Okay, so at the end, then, this guy is now a sucker because they've paid a net cost, never received anything in return, and this guy's doing great because he gets a net benefit. So for reciprocal altruism to be important, we have to have an individual that says, hey, you're a good guy. I know you'll exchange cooperative, cooperative behavior with me. We can get into a nice relationship, but not you, jerk. So for this to happen, Individuals have to have an ability to recognize each other as individuals and to remember, I know who you are and I remember what you did. And if you're a nice guy, okay, let's keep cooperating. But if you're a jerk, forget it. I don't have anything else to do with you. So we've seen these different routes to altruistic behavior. And looking in real cases with real organisms in nature, we find that kin selection is very, very common indeed. It's all over the place in insects, birds, and mammals. And many species are very, very careful to be able to distinguish their close relatives from somebody else. So they show highly developed systems of kin recognition. If I'm helping somebody else because they share those genes in common, I have to be careful only to be nice to those that are indeed my close kin. Reciprocity is a very appealing idea, and it probably appeals to us because we do it. Humans do show forms of reciprocity, and there's hints that it might happen in a few of the primates who likewise have very good cognitive abilities. Central to the idea of reciprocity is the concept of fairness, that I'll help you only if you help me, and I recognize you as a nice person and distinguish you from the jerks. And there are hints of this in a few primate species, and this is really well illustrated in this video clip from YouTube. So a final experiment that I want to mention to you is our fairness study. Uh, and so this, this became a very famous study, and there's now many more, because after we did this about 10 years ago, uh, it became uh, very well known. And we did that originally with capuchin monkeys, and I'm going to show you the first experiment that we did. It has now been done with dogs, and with birds, and with chimpanzees, um, with, but with Sarah Brosnan, we started out with capuchin monkeys. 
So what we did is we put two capuchin monkeys side by side. Again, these animals, they live in a group. They know each other. We take them out of the group, put them in a test chamber. And there's a very simple task that they need to do. And if you give both of them cucumber for the task, the two monkeys side by side, they're perfectly willing to do this 25 times in a row. So cucumber, even though it's really only water in my opinion, but cucumber <laughs> is perfectly fine for them. Now, if you give the partner grapes, the, the food preferences of my capuchin monkeys correspond exactly with the prices in the supermarket. And so if you give them grapes, it's a far better food, uh, then you create inequity between them. So that's the experiment we did. Recently, we videotaped it with new monkeys who had never done the task, uh, thinking that maybe they would have a stronger reaction, and that turned out to be right. The one on the left is the monkey who gets cucumber. The one on the right is the one who gets grapes. The one who gets cucumber, note that the first piece of cucumber is perfectly fine. The first piece she eats. Uh, then she sees the other one getting grape, and you will see what happens. So she gives a rock to us. That's the task. And we give her a piece of cucumber, and she eats it. The other one needs to give a rock to us. And that's what she does. And she gets a grape. And she eats it. The other one sees that. She gives a rock to us now, gets again cucumber. She tests her rock now against the wall. She needs to give it to us. And she gets cucumber again. <laughs> so this is basically the Wall Street protest that you see here. 